Lines of credit are closing with Wells Fargo. What does that mean for your current open credit lines? And ultimately, what does that mean for your credit? And will other banking institutions follow suit? Welcome to the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel where we help you go further, faster financially. I'm your host, Michael Matthey. Guys, we're gonna be diving into this Wells Fargo today. Obviously, if you like information like this on banking institutions, the economy, real estate, go ahead and smash that thumbs up below. That really helps out our algorithms. Did a lot of research on this. This really kind of caught folks off guard. Now, although Wells Fargo has been hinting at this, they're fully rolling this back at this point, stopping one of their biggest products that have been out there. And the news really uh, outraged consumers alone and advocates because Wells Fargo actually went out on record and which was kind of shocking you know when i'm doing this research that an institutional bank out there would say look this is what we're doing you effectively have no control over it and yes it may also negatively affect your credit so we're going to talk about kind of how to stay on top of your credit with these unfortunately utilization is going to be a casualty of this now we're going to break down in this video today what does that look like if you're utilizing current credit lines with wells fargo why did it happen how did it happen Ultimately, if you stick through to the end, we're gonna talk about different alternative options. Now let's talk about why they are shuttering these accounts. And we've got a, a quote here from uh, a spokesperson for the bank saying, as we simplify our product offerings, we made the decision last year to no longer offer personal lines of credit as we feel we can better meet the borrowing needs of our customers through credit card and personal loan products. In late 2017, the Federal Reserve put a cap on Wells Fargo's asset growth, uh, effectively just putting a halt to a lot of their different products in general. They were under investigation. They had many employees that were opening up uh, false credit and mortgage accounts on behalf of either fictitious customers or current customers that did not certainly give them any indication that they wanted to go through with this. Uh, they certainly did not authorize it. And because of this, many consumers were forced to pay millions of dollars in credit card and mortgage interest. And in February of 2020, Wells Fargo agreed to pay $3 billion, that's what they be, dollars to the SEC, obviously at the Fed's advice to get these caps lifted off of them, but ultimately that's not gonna be completely lifted until all of these false claims have been basically straightened out. And they, then they would be considered in full compliance. So kind of makes you wonder, you know, if this is all part of kind of that same scheme. Amid the pandemic also in 2020, uh, Wells Fargo has stopped doing home equity lines of credit. They've also stopped giving out loans to independent car dealerships. So guys, again, these are kind of those tea leaves that are out there. Now I'm a Wells Fargo customer. Let me just go on record. I do not have any open lines of credit with them, nor have I ever. I keep very little money in checking accounts by design. We talk about this all the time. We talk about infinite banking. Love to drop a like uh, or, or link for our, our good friend MC Lobsher on infinite banking through whole life policies. Those are typically things I subscribe to, but I do have a handful um, of just domestic banking checking accounts where I keep a limited amount of funds. Wells Fargo happens to be one of them. I've got a 15 year relationship there. I've never been wronged by them, but I've also never been in this position. Those of you that are out there in this position, um, you've done your research, you did your due diligence, obviously be before you, uh, you know, applied for a credit line through them. None of us have a crystal ball. If any of you out there can find a crystal ball, I will pay a premium and I will share in the profits with you. I've been looking for a crystal ball for years. So drop a comment below. If you can get your hands on one, I would love to participate. Also in February of this year, the Fed actually approved kind of a stepping stone program for Wells Fargo, Fargo who agreed to completely overdo their internal risk management, which makes them one step closer to getting that cap released. When a spokesman internally was asked if there's any direct correlation between the two, they said there's no correlation. You know, I don't know if I'm buying that, guys. You know, that's a little too ironic in my world. I'm not, you know, some rabbit hole skeptic. I'm not some, 
you know, someone that's trying to go in all different directions, conspiracy theories or whatever. But to me, you know, all of this is just too interrelated. So for a, an anonymous spokesman to go on record and say there's no correlation, you know, it doesn't hold a lot of water in my eyes. So here's a handful of questions. Those of you out there are watching right now that do have these open credit lines with Wells Fargo, how do I pay my remaining balance? Now, Wells Fargo has gone on record and said that they will give a 60 day notice uh, before any of these account closures will happen. And then at that point, you would be on a fixed interest rate with monthly payments in accordance with their plan for it. So what that looks like, you know, you're gonna have to find that out on your own, talk to your, uh, obviously your Wells Fargo representative. You would think that they would be in line with, depending on your credit, maybe a prime interest rate. Uh, I can't guarantee that, but that's research you certainly wanna do on, uh, on your own behalf. Talk to your rep right there. What do those payment guidelines look like? It sounds pretty ambiguous to me. I tried to research that deeper. They did not go on record for anything, so I'm not gonna bring anything onto the channel that I could not substantiate. Number two, how will this affect your credit? Now, in its statement, Wells Fargo did acknowledge the inconvenience of it potentially negatively affecting people's credit. I don't think as of something that's negatively affecting my credit from a banking institution that I've put my trust and faith and money in, as an inconvenience, but that's what they're calling it right now. That's absurd to me. But there are some reasons why this will negatively affect your credit. It's really gonna boil down to a number of factors. So let's take this example right now. We're gonna go ahead and put a graphic up here. Let's take a look at account A, which has a $5,000 balance, a $10,000 limit. Account B, $2,000 balance, $10,000 limit. And account C, $3,000 balance, $10,000 limit. This is gonna be an illustration for credit utilization, guys, which plays a key role in borrowing power. Obviously, it affects your credit as well. The total debt above of $10,000 between the three accounts, so the five plus the two plus the three, divided into the total credit limit of $30,000, you've got a 10,000 limit on each, equals a utilization rate of 33% or one third. Now let's assume that account C is closed by the bank. That $10,000 credit limit is no longer available to you. When this occurs, your total credit limit automatically decreases to $20,000 from $30,000 and your credit utilization rate climbs to 50% from 33%. This is how with the closure of lines of credit with Wells Fargo, it will negatively affect your credit. Not to mention on top of that, the length of the trade line. So another thing that creditors often are gonna look at is how long have you had an open line, right? If you've got a five or a 10 or a 15 or 20 year history with any type of lending institution and you've made those on-time payments, that looks really good. Well, now all of a sudden that relationship is coming to a halt that will not be something moving forward that you're able to kind of lean on, you know, as far as those aged uh, lines of, of credit. And that's very, very valuable. Like I said, guys, I don't have line of credit history with Wells Fargo. I've got just a personal, just a basic business relationship with them that I've had for years. They've never done me wrong. What I'm kind of leery of out there on behalf and just playing the advocate role on behalf of the channel is we would be naive to the fact to think that other lending institutions aren't out there now. Wells Fargo has been in hot water, so they're a little bit of a different animal from a financial institution standpoint under the scrutiny of obviously the Fed and the SEC, but other lending institutions are following suit. Potentially they're watching. They're going to be monitoring Wells Fargo on how eliminating that product from their line of offerings definitely affects their balance sheet. If they can see a positive spin or a positive outlook on that, you can bet that other institutions may follow suit. They oftentimes play follow the leader. So if you can't go to Wells Fargo anymore, but you still have these same type of credit line needs, whether it's on a personal or a professional level, we're gonna give you a few um, examples of, of things you can do right now. If you can no longer go back to the well, pun intended, bad joke, sorry, good joke. Maybe you get a ha-ha out of that, but let's take a look at your alternative options. If that um, Wells Fargo has dried up for you, what you can do now to secure the same type of capital. Number one, of course, is gonna be a new line of credit. Many institutions or most banking institutions out there like this offer a similar product. Take a look at the bank rates loan calculator, depending on you know what kind of product you take out. You're gonna to wanna to take a look at interest, of course, 
You're gonna to want to take a look at payback terms, what that monthly payment would look like, of course, for the money that you do have in play, and obviously make sure that it falls in line with your budget. A zero interest credit card would be the second. There are many institutions out there that do offer, and obviously it's based on credit worthiness, zero interest credit cards, where you know effectively you can get that introductory rate, if you will, for 12 months, where you're not paying interest on any of the principal balance for that 12 months, and a lot of people will take these on, they'll pay them off before the interest simply starts to accrue. Take a hard look at this, guys. If you're looking at this as for home renovations, going out there to you know, do a new build, you're going out there to do rehab work, for example, many contractors do not accept credit cards. So before you get in bed with a contractor, if this is the path you're gonna take a look at, make sure that you talk to them about preferred or only forms of payment. You don't wanna get kind of down the road only to realize that they will not accept uh, a credit card for payment and then you're kind of stuck holding that bag. You have to liquidate, you have to find other forms of cash or capital uh, on top of that. So do your research on that before you go down that path with a, uh, with a GC. The next is gonna be a complete cash out refinance. If you're a homeowner, a cash out refinance is gonna allow you to take out the equity that you've invested in your home since you've been living in it. Now, unlike a traditional refinance, which replaces your mortgage uh, at a lower interest rate, a cash out refinance, ultimately pays off your initial mortgage and then sets a new loan term. Obviously, that's going to be at a higher amount. It's going to have its own terms and conditions. But the great thing about that is once your initial or once your previous loan has been paid off, you're getting that big lump sum payment. So if you're in need of a large chunk of cash, you've got equity in your home, a complete cash out refinance may be something you want to take a look at as opposed to uh, the traditional refinance model. You're getting that large chunk of money up front. Your desire is not simply to lower your interest rate or to lower your monthly payments. You want that cash in hand. So guys, we're always going to encourage you to do your own research, do your own due diligence. We love doing the research on your behalf. I really enjoy and our team does as well going in, digging into articles, scouring, you know, online resources, kind of picking each other's brains on how to find this information on your behalf. This was, we felt, a very relevant topic to talk about, particularly for those of you that do have open lines of credit with Wells Fargo right now, what your alternative options, solutions may be moving forward. We're always gonna talk to you about protecting your credit. That's one of the biggest assets, obviously, and commodities that anyone can have. So we're always gonna play the advocate role on your behalf. Guys, if you want additional content like this, whether it's banking, finance, real estate, cash flow, please go ahead and smash that thumbs up below. That helps our algorithms. If you're a subscriber already, thanks for joining us again. We always appreciate you joining us. If you are not a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe below. If you like the content, tell friends, family. We're always looking for like-minded people to be here on the channel. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care. Make it a great day. Thank you.